Hello, everyone, and welcome to the IEEE Young Professionals uh, uh, webinar. Um, today's webinar is on why engineering matters for women, and it's brought to you by IEEE Young Professional and uh, the uh, Women in Engineering uh, affinity groups of the IEEE. Our speaker today, like I mentioned, is Monique Moreau from uh, Cisco Systems. She is the CTO of Cisco Services. Uh, before we get uh, started, um, just a few introduction slides. Um, Welcome to our, uh, our, our our webinar. My name is uh, Matthew Carius. I'm the webinar specialist for the uh, MGA uh, Young Professionals uh, Board. Uh, I'm also the vice chair for the Toronto Young Professionals uh, Affinity Group. Um, and also, uh, IEEE Young Professionals will be hosting uh, monthly uh, webinars, uh, either one or two uh, webinars a month on effective communication, leadership, and especially topics like uh, we have uh, uh, today on why engineering uh, uh, matters from for women, and of course, many, many more topics um, to come. Uh, audience participation. Um, during the webinar, please type any questions you have in the uh, question box below shown there. You can actually uh, vote for other questions that appear below, and uh, uh, I will ask the most popular questions uh, uh, first. And all questions uh, will be answered either during the webinar or following the webinar through a five minute, five to ten minute Q&A session. Um, uh, before we get started, uh, just uh, some information on new name, uh, new field, uh, new, new look, new field. Uh, the IEEE graduates of the last decade, or gold group, has now been uh, renamed to um, IEEE Young Professionals. So uh, the reason for that change was IEEE Gold was not instantly recognized as a young professionals group, which is exactly uh, uh, what we are. Uh, the new name makes it easier to find information and benefits relevant to young professionals uh, within the IEEE. Uh, recent success stories of this new name change, uh, we had a, a, a very popular networking mixer in Toronto with over 150 uh, young professionals attend, and uh, in, in Central Texas, um, a mixer also uh, uh, a great success at the South by Southwest uh, Festival back in, uh, uh, in March. <clears throat> um, you can uh, catch up on our, on our Gold Rush blog for uh, an IEEE young professional uh, news. Uh, and please connect with young professionals online. This is where you're going to find uh, all of our all, all of our news, all of our webinars uh, coming up. Uh, we also have uh, two uh, new career-based services, the Mentor Center and the Resume Lab, which I will be uh, talking a little bit more at the end of this uh, seminar. But uh, you can also uh, connect with us, please, uh, on our website. Our email is shown there. Uh, all the webinars and all of our uh, products and uh, services will be fe featured in Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and of course our YouTube page where this webinar uh, will be posted for uh, future viewing. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce today's uh, speaker, uh, Monique Moreau. Uh, she's the CTO of Cisco Services, uh, uh, Cisco Systems. Um, she's been at the company for over 13 years, and during the startup days in the mid-80s, uh, she built an excellent leadership team in uh, Asia Pacific uh, uh, region. Her current focus is on M2M security and, and e-health and uh, we are uh, uh, very lucky to have her with us today and uh, discussing uh, why engineering um, matters uh, for women. Uh, so Monica, uh, please take it away and thank you again. Thank you, Matthew. And um, you know, I would like to thank uh, the IEEE um, young professionals for the opportunity to speak with you all today. As the title indicates, um, engineers, engineering does matter for women, and I would argue that, moreover, a, a career in sciences and, and, and information technology is, is really critical. And you're going to, as I go through this talk, and, and it's really a discussion and a, and a point of view, you know, I'm going to, it's going to be multifaceted, multimodal, because I'm going to show that we've had a history of women pioneers uh, before before us, and there is a, also, uh, additionally, a, situ a situation of what's going on today, what's, what's our reality, and then, of course, I'll talk about uh, business imperatives, and then some headliners around uh, engineers um, who are making a difference, and uh, particularly women engineers and uh, women technologists in, in, in our, in our uh, industry, and look at about um, how you can shape, use engineering to shape global technology policy, you know, shaping the future. I'll go to some personal examples, uh, you know, what success looks like, what my view, what my journey has been, and then, of course, from my perspective, it's all about a call to action. Well, listen, you know, if you use technology daily, here's the premise, um, 
you know, why not create it? And, and, and certainly we've had um, pioneers ahead, as I st stated before. Why not create it? Um, as I start to, to sort of paint the story, you know, this is uh, about women, particularly in technology, women in engineering. You know, this is a, a, a view from the Women in History um, group here. Uh, when we talk a shape about computing, if you will. But I think it's really interesting if we, we kind of take a step back uh, uh, in, in the 1800s. Um, you know, we had Mary Dixon Keyes who, in, on May 15, 1809, uh, received the first U.S. patent uh, issued to a woman. And, in fact, uh, she was a Connecticut uh, native, and she had um, actually invented a process for weaving straw with silk or thread. So, you know, here's an example in the 1800s, and I, I go to Ada Lovelace, and I, I know most of you know who Ada Lovelace uh, was, but, you know, she had met uh, Charles Babbage in 1833, and she became interested in a model that he had constructed of a mechanical device to compute values of quadratic functions, and that was the difference engine. And of course, she also studied his ideas on another machine, and that was the analytical engine, which would uh, use punch cards to, to read instructions and data for solving mathematical problems. Lovelace, and it was very, very interesting, was asked to translate this article into English um, for a British scientific journal. She made uh, many, many notes of her own to, to the translation, and she was familiar with Babbage's work. Um, her additions, uh, I should point out, showed how Babbage's analytical engine would work and, and, and give uh, a set of um, instructions for using the engine for calculating the Bernoulli numbers. The interesting point here is that she published the translation and notes under the initials AAL, and she was concealing her identity, as did many women who published before her, were more accepted as, uh, it was interesting, as intellectual um, equals. And that was the challenge, was that, you know, um, the engine is now recognized at a, as a model for a computer, and Ada Lovelace's notes as a description of a computer and software. So it's an amazing, and an, an example of an amazing pioneer before us, um, setting the path of not only engineering, but you know, computing, et cetera. One that I particularly um, really found out, it was very interesting, was Hedy Lamarr. Not only was she an amazing silver screen uh, movie star, but she actually had co-invented with George and Tail the, the communication system that um, manipulated radio frequencies between transmission and reception to create, um, at that time, World War II was an un unbreakable cold to prevent top secret messages from being intercepted. And, in fact, the Allies used it to defeat the Germans in World War II. And one could say that this was really an early technique for spe um, spectrum communications and frequency hopping, which really paved the way for today's wireless communications. And, you know, she was recognized in the 1990s, I mean, for, 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 such, for the work that had, she had achieved and really had a deep interest in technology. Um, but, you know, her path took her to being a screen star. And as I said before, uh, one thing about Hetty was, as I, is, is not only was she a glamorous um, uh, movie star, but she actually had invented, co-invented with George until the secret communication system that manipulated radio frequencies. Um, so, you know, this is um, going here to Hetty. She, um, she really was a, um, this was to create um, was the basis actually to create an, an unbreakable code to prevent top secret uh, messages from being intercepted. And in fact, the Allies used it to defeat the Germans in World War II. And what, what we could say is that with this, this is an early technique for spread spectrum communications and frequency hopping that paved the way for today's wireless communications. And if we go to Grace Hopper, again setting the, the, the notion of pioneers ahead before us, she was absolutely, she's well known, uh, best um, known for her contribu uh, contribution to computing, and which was really the invention of the compiler. And here we're talking about an intermediate program that uh, translates English tr instructions into the language of the target computer. And what she said was, you know, I'm lazy, I was lazy, and I hope that the programmer may return to being a mathematician. 
her, her work actually foreshadowed enormous numbers of developments that are now the foundations of, of digital computing. Um, subroutines, uh, formula translation, relative addressing, the linking loader, code um, optimization, even symbolic manipulation that can be, uh, that is of the kind of the embodiment in Mathematica and, and Maple. And, you know, um, she did uh, join Eckert Mouchley Computer Corporation as a senior mathematician, and she worked with John Eckert and John Mouchley on the UNIVAC uh, computer. And um, she, you know, a she was able to actually provide the foundations uh, for the specifics of uh, specification of the, the COBOL language, the common business oriented language that came out in 1959. Uh, you know, as I transition from pioneers that have been ahead of us, and we we're talking about making the call to action here, why women, uh, engineering matters to women, to the situation, we have a, a, a burning platform situation here. And we, you know, we, this report has come out from uh, National Center for Women in Information Technology that fundamentally states that you know, men over age of 25 in the United States um, uh, held 87% of the bachelor degrees in engineering fields, and only 23% of the workers in science, technology, engineering, and math related jobs are women. And yet, women make you know comprise about 48% of all workers in the uh, in in the occupations. And here's the, the situation is that the higher you go in, in the corporate ladder, the lower these numbers become. So there's some kind of leaky pipeline that we're all trying to address in industry. And so as, as, as one can see in the italics, you don't need to be a math whiz to see that these numbers don't add up. And that's the reality that we have today. We can talk, we constantly are talking about it. Now I do have a vision. The vision is but it's really, really embedded in all of our DNA. <laughs> we don't have to talk about it anymore. It would just be here. It'd just be automatic. There are the same organization actually did, and this is data driven. Uh, 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 kind of drove to to what we call the business imperative. That it does have, uh, you know, business. It does make business sense to have sort of this diversity of engineering mindsets. And I said diversity overall in companies. Um, where you see that the that there has been improvement in, in productivity and improvement in the bottom line is what one could actually conclude here. So there's enough of studies, and they go back several years to actually make that case. So we've gone from the situation, we've gone from pioneers ahead of that have paved the way to the situation, which is sort of the burning platform. You know, the situation is called to 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 action here once you, you're in engineering or sci and sciences and technology, to the business imperative, which says, you know, it makes business sense. And if we translate, if we go now to sort of today, I mean, even further today, we have now some, even women pioneers today taking on um, um, really very interesting roles. I, I mean, one is we have um, the... Citroen, who is a new CEO, and she actually, um, you know, the thing that's very interesting here is Citroen is a, a French um, auto automobile manufacturer, and she's a woman and she's British. And so, you know, the, the implications is that you need sort of this different um, per perspective. And by the way, they, you have the head of um, IBM, Gina Rometty, um, is also has a, a, an engineering background. And Bette Midler's tweet is in reference to the head of GM, General Motors, Mary Barra, who has an electrical engineering background. And it's, you know, Bette Midler fundamentally, you know, states, wow, um, she, you know, GM has anointed this woman and, uh, to lead. And, and, and she says, see, girls, she started out as, as an engineer, and I don't mean trains. You know, sort of poking fun here, but really making sort of that call to, to, to action, the compelling call that says engineering really, really, really matters. And, you know, I live in, uh, when I'm not living in a 747 airplane, I do um, reside in Europe. And for, for the Europeans, for my Region 8 um, colleagues, um, uh, which Europe is uh, part of, um, 
This is a photo of Vice President of the European Commission, Nellie Crowes. And Nellie Crowes takes this issue at heart. Um, I had the pleasure to, to be at uh, the European Parliament on April 25th, um, a year ago, and to listen to Nellie present um, to, on, on this call to action for women in technology and women in engineering overall. And it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, press release. It's a wonderful speech to listen to. But what I liked what she said was, she, you know, she said, look, you know, Marilyn Monroe, and that's what she was re referring to, once sang that diamonds are a girl's best friend. And she says, you know, these days that's not true. You know, what, what, what she was pleading for is technology and engineering, math. These are your, a girl's best friend, these, these capabilities. And you can have them and the diamonds will follow. And, you know, the audience uh, laughed. And, but it, it was really a call for, um, for, for, for action here, a call that says, hey, look, we need, and that's what she was saying as a commissioner, we need more women. It makes sense. Uh, it matters because we have a skill, um, you know, issue. We have a skill gap in, in Europe. And, you know, it's nearly a, a million workers that, that need to fill that skill gap. And so if we don't fill it, and that's from a European perspective, we're going to, um, we're, we're going to be non-competitive in the future. And so the call to action was, and at that time, and she's very, very, very um, energetic about this issue, was please, it's a no-brainer, you need to plug the gap. So step up. So it matters. It really, really matters. Another person is, um, if for, for people who don't know Gina Davis, she's an actress. And she is a special um, IT envoy on this issue of, of gender, if you will, and t women in technology. And particularly, her issue is around uh, media representation of, of women especially in, in, in technology. She, it's, a, it's a really strong issue that she has. And, and Gina Davis's speech uh, was September 26, 2013 in New York. And she fundamentally said, look, the media does not portray women engineers or computer scientists practically at all. Um, practically at all. And um, she really fundamentally said it's, it's a it's an area that uh, really she wants to focus on from a, a, a media perspective. She is very much, uh, very much engaged and passionate about this particular topic. And I believe uh, in, in this announcement that you, in this, um, actually, if you watch this, uh, her, her presentation at, on YouTube, she actually um, calls out and states that she will she has a scholarship for women who want to study um, analytics. Um, and so, um, you know, she's very, very, she's not only passionate about w what she can do to change the mindset from a media perspective, but she's actually putting up a scholarship to encourage women to, to enter the field, and particularly with her call to study analytics. In another area, um, I had the privilege to um, to be on a panel a year ago, just about a year ago, a little over a year ago, and it was uh, Women in Science. Um, it actually, it was a panel entitled Women in Science, a Necessity. And what we had was, um, you know, together with the UNESCO, CERN, the Director General of CERN uh, was also present on, on the panel and uh, present, as well as the ITU. And so you had, a, this was really a, around science, or not only science, but technology, mathematics, engineering, and really a call to action about uh, what needs to happen. Obviously, it was a provocative question. You know, um, it does matter. And in fact, there were some findings from that. It, it is a necessity. And what we found, uh, although this was, this was held at the uh, United Nations Palais des de Nations, this really was um, a question that what stated that we need to have more women involved, not in the sciences, and it really starts early of how you know how you how young you how early you go into to education, kindergarten and 
primary school and grade school, um, high schools, and so on. And um, as I stated before, you know, we, we got to be able to go throughout the educational system, follow women as they enter the field, follow women in the graduate, undergraduate, graduate studies, follow women as they go into to whether they're in research, follow women when they're, whether they're in industry, and to ensure that there is an encouraging environment uh, overall. And I always say, um, you know, uh, cool is, 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 is it's, it's cool. It's very cool. You know, this is a slang, but, and I have a, also a sort of a, a mantra that geek is chic. Um, our CTO, Padma Sri Warrior, will say, I'm a technologist and I love fashion. I actually tweeted that last Friday. But she's, um, so what we're saying is we just need to get more women and more girls involved uh, in, in engineering and technology. It makes absolute sense. As I transition from, you know, the call to action from, from the pioneers who paved the way, from the compelling examples, from the compelling data to, um, to, the, to a global call to action, let me kind of talk a little bit about my own path. So charting your way from a perspective I see it is not, you know, it's not easy. It's about who you are, being an inventor, being a technologist, um, you know, having published books. And uh, yes, I, uh, you know, you're an industry standards bearer, bearer, whether it's, you know, IEEE, you name your standards, ITUT, whatever. You can be a mother, daughter, wife, partner. And, you know, I have this sort of, oh my God, who, who am I in all of this change? And, and it's very worthy questions to ask. And I think it's worthy questions to ask from anybody, men, men and, and or women, but particularly women. Who are you? And I would argue that perhaps, you know, the revolution, and I saw a revolution is causing a shift in perspective that, you know, sort of jocularly stating here Copernicus was right, instead of the sun being the center of the solar system, perhaps, you know, you as a, as a budding woman technologist and engineer can be the center of the system. And I can tell you, you in, in industry, you have the opportunity to chart your path. You have that opportunity, specifically around who you are with business, business partners, who, are you, who you are with industry, and the types of technologies that are surrounding you. Again, if you're using technology, why not invent it? Why not create it? So in my life, um, there's a tectonic shift happening here and change is happening. This is my world. You know, I have to look at lots of dis disruptive technologies. There's all kinds of control points. I have to look at creating new business models and I'm working, you know, cross-organizationally in industry and of course, because it's private industry, you know, you're delighting the customer. And of course, here's my world. My world is like, what is the strategy? You know, what is the strategy? How do we determine that long range strategy? Whether we deal with silicon, whether we deal with new architectures, open source and um, analytics and machine to machine. And let's talk about, um, you know, machine learning algorithms, et cetera. How this is, you know, sort of my my world on a constant, constant basis. And then I have to, because being the CTO of services, which is a fifteen thousand person organization, you have to translate it to what is what does it mean for it, quote unquote to be competitively, you know, um, you know, to have a competitive advantage. What does it mean for for customers and their business outcomes? What does it mean for, for uh, your interaction with the senior uh, um, technical community that I, that I work with in the company? So my world is constantly dynamic, but it is fun. It is fun. And so here we've had all, all of these numbers, but I can tell you it's great. But, you know, there's also spheres of influence that I can really point to. And this is my mother. My mother's, this was her last birthday. She passed away September 17, 2013. And, um, you know, she always said, whatever you do, be true to yourself. 
this was her last birthday. Whatever you say, do, you know, whatever you do, be true to yourself. She was excited by the fact that I had chosen this career um, to be in um, engineering, to be in technology. Um, she just, what her her point was, just be your authentic self. You know, define yourself by you. You don't need to have people define you. You know who you are. And the whole point here is to be anchored as you go through you know your career as you are young professionals you go through your career and you're anchored you're going to have always that anchor and in this particular case it was my mother who who happened to be my my best friend and you have to ask yourself what are you passionate about so it matters what are you passionate about and in my case I'm very passionate about getting girls into to technology, getting girls into ICT. This is the portal, for example, for girls in ICT from the ITU. So, you know, it is, as I said, a, a global passion that I have. I also have, you know, something that, and this becomes very, very personal, a personal brand. If you studied mythology, this is Pegasus. And my symbol is, is Pegasus. Um, and why? Because because um, nothing else better exemplifies knowledge, glory, and inspiration. Um, what does this have to do with me? Um, knowledge, I, I, I too find, for example, the promise in the unknowable, and I do strive to understand why. Glory is really, I, I aspire, I mean, I want to pass the passion to the next generation of women engineers that anything is possible if you put your mind to it. But most of all, I believe uh, I believe in the glory of the inspiration and the glory of the inspiration of the pioneers who I pointed out previously walked before me and hoped to be worthy to pave the road for those who follow. So that, you know that's my personal brand. And then if I look at sometimes I'm asked again for coming down doing a double click on a point of view of what are the ingredients. You know it's all about and you hear this and you hear this, it's all about moving out of your comfort zone. There's no right or wrong approach here. You know, it starts with an idea, it could be, you know, it's what if, it's taking a risk. You never know that you're going to be ready. You're never going to be ready enough, uh, whatever that, that project is, whatever that assignment is. Um, you know, you just have to jump into it. I have a colleague um, who I'm working with and he says, you know, he told me, you know, I feel like I'm at the edge of a cliff and, and I, I have to jump. And I told him, if you, in this particular case, if you don't jump, you will be pushed. And you may not like the push. And I think that this is the whole issue. This is around risk, passion. You've got expectations, you know, who, setting your own expectations and having your own mindset. These are sort of the ingredients that I, I have um, put together in terms of really what it means to move out of your comfort zone. One thing that I would like to say is that moving out of your comfort zone, it's very, very, it's an art. If you don't do that, if you don't, the analogy is I have a, a colleague who's in the entertainment business who once told me, if you don't define your own role, and you know, redefining yourself is a constant art, a script may be written for you, and you may not like it. So, um, you know, it's not just being sedentary, it's also being sort of, sometimes we have to work, although we are data-driven as engineers, sometimes there are uh, cases where we have to work in, under ambiguous situations, and, and it's being comfortable in doing that. As I work through my own personal story, I mean, I'm going to now show you some clips as to, you know, how I've been charting my way and there's no right or wrong answer. I'm just humbled to be before you. Um, this is in Thailand. Um, I, you know, again, I was in Thailand at, at, at a, a presentation. Uh, it's very interesting what you find is more often you're, I'm usually the only woman on a panel. Um, it, has its, it, it can be interesting, and, um, and I say that, uh, very interesting, but you are at least able, remember what I said in the beginning, you're able to express a point of view, and you're able to shape tech policy. This uh, is um, 
you know, on, from a standards perspective, I'm with colleagues at the ITU, and they happen to be uh, from the People's Republic of China, they happen to be from the Russian Federation, they happen to be from various countries in Africa and in the Middle East. And so, you know, again, uh, expressing a point of view, ex ex coming up and having the courage to actually s sit up and, and look at how you shape standards from a global perspective. This is at the, the Global Standards Symposium in Dubai in November 2012. And there I was on a panel and talking about um, a point of view on, 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 around e-health and how you use technologies around, how we can use technologies, for example, to shape, um, to, 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 to affect um, society. And the, the issue came up around what about e-health and how, 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 do, how, how, how do we affect um, uh, countries and how do we look at um, using them uh, to, to affect society. So it was a very, very um, interesting interaction and discussion. This was at, the, um, this was at a, a Girls in ICT Day in New York, uh, United Nations, uh, right across the street from the United Nations and on a panel around why it matters. And it ho so happens that um, European Commissioner Nellie Crows was actually there, and uh, we had a wonderful, um, wonderful panel on, on this topic. So it is extraordinarily global. And I think these are familiar faces. Um, you know, uh, being the 2014 uh, winner for the Clementina Sadua Award for IEEE Region 8, here we have, um, you know, this was um, what an honor, what a privilege, um, what a humbling honor, at, you know, being recognized in this past April in Budapest uh, with Martin Bastian's um, IEEE Region 8 director and great, great colleague and Joyce uh, Wawagama, who's, the, uh, you know, IEEE Region 8 uh, WE coordinator, and of course uh, Howard Mitchell, who's IEEE 2014 president elect. So, you know, it was just a, a wonderful, humbling experience uh, and, and just super, super, super colleagues in this industry and super colleagues. I mean, I cannot say enough about, the, about IEEE, just wonderful, wonderful um, opportunities here, wonderful opportunities. So here is where I'm going to go with this. We want you. You know, we have IEEE Women in Engineering. We want you to break that stereotype. We want you to be the role model. It does matter. It absolutely matters. Further, what does success look like? Success looks like for me, as I said before, my vision is it becomes part of what we do every day. And then, you know, it's, it's like you have the portrait of what a women engineer can be is, is today. And the, particularly the, uh, the, the, the photo in the middle is the right man for the job may be a woman. And of course the cartoon is, is absolutely great um, because now you have sort of this woman who's engineer is, who's really, really so passionate about her work and of course the young man saying, you know, please do marry me, right? So this is, you know, success. It, it, just, it just becomes set, so second nature to us. And you know what I'm really excited about is that we have young women in engineers in development. And I think this is a, a fantastic opportunity. It matters. It matters deeply. And uh, we can actually together shape the future. And you know what? If you can't see it, you can't be it. You've heard this before. If you can't see it, you can't be it. So that's my call to action to you all. It matters, and it matters deeply. And thank you. Thank you, Monique, for an excellent, excellent uh, uh, talk. Very, very inspiring. Um, I want to remind all the, uh, the the viewers right now: please ask your questions at the, at the bottom of your screen there, and of course, vote for some questions uh, posted there. We do actually have a couple questions just uh, recently posted. Please. Um, uh, first, Laura from the UK is asking: uh, What's the most important ingredient for your own brand? So you so you talked about your own brand. What's uh, what's in general? What's the most important ingredient? For a female to be successful in, in engineering and science? You know, it's um, uh, for me, because you know, we had the ingredients, right? Passion. I, I always say passion is 50% of everything. 
And um, you know, people. I was just mean, mean, uh, recently at an event. I said, oh, in one word, define yourself. And I said, passion. Um, you know, when I interview somebody, um, if the interview comes across that they, they have uh, three PhDs and whatever, and there's not passion, um, I'm, I'm, I get concerned, right? I don't care if your passion is chess. I don't care what it is, but passion, it, it, because it's, it's, it's sort of, it drives you. There's something you've got to, that drives you. It's what drives you at the end. Does that answer your question? Perfect. That's an excellent answer. So, uh, another question from Susanna from the United States. I was thinking uh, uh, about this question as well, so I'm just going to read it right off here. I understand that, that the need for a call to action to encourage women to pursue technology, uh, technological careers. Where does the call to action start? Prior to university, during, during university, in the workplace, uh, at big <laughs> tech companies? Where does it start, essentially? Yeah, yeah okay. I mean, um... I'm going to have it multifaceted. It's, it's really multifaceted here. It's a great question. It's a great question. Well, one is we've got to get it. I mean, we, we're so corporations are very involved in, and so getting involved in grade school. I mean, I just got you know robotics and, and so on. So getting that um, so primary school, secondary school, at least getting the passion there. I think that's sort of setting the seed. Uh, it, it's going to be in segments. Um, so one is, you know, get excited about technology, right? Uh, st I, there's now you even have it's not just STEM. You have STEAM. You add art to it, which is fantastic. Uh, get excited is the one thing. Keeping the excitement going is another. And uh, actually, so you can see what I'm where I'm going with this. It's getting exciting. It's it's the passion. And you know what? Let me just la say one thing. You've got to have the courage. Um, and and and, but with that, I mean, it's been extraordinarily satisfying. So it's all of the above is really the answer here. It's exactly. all of these. So just stemming from that question, then are are you you're obviously in favor of early development programs and robotics and and, and things like that in in elementary or preschool? Have you mm -hmm. have you seen a growth in that? Um, we've obviously been around the world, and and where has it? been changing the most in terms of getting that passion to start or at, at a young age and, and then again in which locations in the world are, is, is this actually happening? Well, I mean, I, so uh, a great question once again. I see this um, particularly stemming a lot of it through, through um, happening in uh, North America. Um, it's been sort of the uh, observation I have, I've, I've noted. Um, and it's also creating, by the way, I'm going to say it's also part of the family environment. Uh, which is uh, very very important because you you know mothers and fathers are getting involved and, and encouraging your your uh, your your daughters and and by the way your daughters and sons but your daughters in this particular case to to get excited I think that's really really important I I, I just uh, you know we're we're starting to see that more and more and um, and and I think we need to we need to sort of spread it out um, in in the various geographies exactly. Uh so we have two separate questions, but uh, they are very uh, closely related. One from Nancy from Canada and mm -hmm. uh, Jane from the United States. Um, so currently, what's the distribution of men to women in engineering? And from that, um, Jane was asking, why, why, what are your thoughts on why many women drop out of technology careers? So what's well, okay. the distribution and why do they drop out of oh, technology Well, okay. Careers? I mean, we go back to the numbers that were sort of um, at least, um, I mean, I'll just say the numbers that we had before, which was sort of, I'll just go from the, the, the study, which was, you know, 23% um, of the work is, and I'll just say STEM overall, I'm not specific to engineering, but, you know, kind of put it in the bucket, um, are, are women, and 48% 40 per, of the workers in all uh, occupations. Um, it, it's, uh, it's, that's the, kind of the checkpoint of where we're at. Why they drop out, we need to understand the sort of the, the pipeline. I, Leaky pipeline, and here's here's the thing. Sometimes it's um, it, it's it's very complex. The the, the reason reason, and I'm I'm going to look at it from an industry perspective. Uh, this is the perspective of a hat that I that I wear. It's uh, the issue of you know, do you have is it is it is it an issue? And I don't like to use the term work work style lifestyle balance, but you know, it could be complexities there in the, in the home life, mm -hmm. personal life. There could be complexities um, where the environment doesn't feel safe and for some reason um, and and here's the other thing is is it's 
and I tell women this, I encourage, and sometimes it's cultural, depending on where you're at in the, in the world, you've got to be able to, to I, I just heard this term um, last Friday, grab the mic and never let it go, right? You've got to, he you've got to make yourself heard. Um, and sometimes that's a very difficult thing to do. You know, people, you know, especially as engineers, we kind of sit in and we, we want to be recognized. Um, but, so, it, it, and you have, that may, that may, that comes uh, only insofar as uh, you recognize, you know, you being recognized, you have to actually take control of your own career and, and, and sort of kind of make, show, showcase what it is you kind of do and, 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 and be part of that uh, proactively. So right. safe environments um, and, and, and complexities around personal life uh, is, is, is also an issue. And I'm going to make a, a point is that uh, now in my company we have, because over 75% of our population are, are male, we've got a wonderful group of, of fantastic uh, men who are working with us to create, try to create that environment. And they, and they, they call themselves, they've got a button, uh, Cisco Men Advocating Real Change. Well, that, that, that kind of falls into another question. We have a bunch of questions coming in right now. Um, this one from Nada, Nada Anid from the, U, from the U.S., and you kind of touched on it just now, actually, on how can universities partner with Cisco or other corporations to promote female enge engineering education, self-confidence, or passion for technology and, and engineering, whether K-12 programs or college, or, or college ed education? Are there any specific... Uh Examples that Cisco offers, just like what you mentioned. Oh yeah, yeah, we're very, 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 very close to our universities. Um, um, you know, uh, globally, well, particularly in, in, in North America and, and, and some outside North America. So, for example, let me give you a concrete example. Um, I'm on the um, strategic advisory board for the School of Computer Science at North Carolina State University, and um, you know. What we want to do is make sure, so there's sort of the challenge, we want to make sure that we, if you, if you go to the university, they have a wonderful um, wa wonderful environment where, where they have a village, what they call STEM Village, uh, in, at uh, NC State. And, um, you know, it's, it's really, really keeping the curriculum, uh, it has nothing to do with the curriculum per se, but really encouraging, it has an encouraging environment. So. Uh, what we have at uh, uh, being on the school uh, strategic advisory board, you know, you kind of uh, challenge one another as to um, what that environment looks like, and we're working. That's Cisco as an example, and Cisco does that with other universities where we um, we we really want to get close to to the university on universities on this issue, and certainly our CEO cares about it, and um, also you know to say, hey, this is a great company to work at, right? So. So it's you know you, you have one wonderful thing that uh, university graduates have is they have your choice today in industry. I mean you've got really great choices. Yes. Uh, so private industry is, um, is, is 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 great. Also research. I won't put my you know research because I know you I got some researchers here so I love research. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of grad students of, of viewing. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Keep it up. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Uh, another question from Kathy from the U.S. Uh, it seems like some parents don't encourage their daughters to go into technical fields because it, it feels not as girly thing to do. No. What can um, what can we do or, or 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 girls do to educate the general public that engineering is not just uh, hands-on work? Yeah, and that's a great question. Again, I mean, you know, um, and, and it depends on your environment. It's not like you necessarily uh, certainly coming from a background. I mean, my mother was not an engineer, and she just wanted me to be happy. Um, I think that uh, you, it, it's, if you don't see it, you can't be it. So, I mean, especially for women who are now in, the, in, in universities, just go out there and showcase it and say, hey, look, this, is, this can be great. Or, you know, um, to, 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 to have the courage to say, look, this is, this is where, what the industry needs, and I think this is where I want to go. You may not have, I mean, I, I, it, it's a complex issue because of, of where you're coming from, right? Right. Culturally, there are some countries that say, you know, engineers, no way. Doctors and physicians and lawyers are better engineers. Um, so you have to kind of dispel that image. And we, especially in IEEE, especially in this industry, have an opportunity to do that. And we're doing it. I, I mean, I have to say, that's, that's, that's work in progress. That's, that's an excellent point. Um, 
So there aren't any questions uh, coming in right now, but the, there is a comment from Isabel, and uh, she, she's asking if you're interested, interested in presenting a similar seminar uh, to speaker for IEEE WIE in Indiana, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer that question for her. Uh, just get into contact with me, and then I can uh, put you in contact with the... Uh, with 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 Monique, and we can talk about that off offline in, t in terms of other speaking engagements with the uh, with the IEEE and WIE. Would you would you not agree? Uh, yes, I agree. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, are there any other are there if are there any other questions? I think we've been having an excellent discussion uh, uh, thus far. Uh, really inspiring talk. Uh, gave, certainly gave me a history lesson. Well, I want to thank you all. I mean, I, as I said before, it's a uh, you know, it's a it's a great field, um, and uh, you 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 get to do such wonderful things. As I said, uh, the, the 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 palette of, is up to you. Whether it's shaping tech, uh, policy in countries uh, via your engagement uh, in IEEE, for example, or via your discipline that you have, um, it's it's just uh, a, a wonderful field. And I I go back to Nellie Crows. You can have the diamonds too. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, okay, so just uh, I'd like to uh, moving over to my screen here. I'd like to thank everyone for uh, participating in this uh, in this webinar. Uh, please complete the feedback survey, which I will be sending out the link for, along with the YouTube link um, for this webinar uh, in in a couple hours' time. Uh, our next IEEE Young Professionals webinar is on August twenty seventh, twenty fourteen, ten a.m. Eastern Time, uh, where Nagy Negathran uh, uh, will be speaking to us on how to be a star engineer. Um, please check out our other career-based services uh, that we offer young professionals and all IEEE members, uh, first being a mentor uh, center in which we uh, link up uh, a mentee with a mentor uh, of similar fields and uh, uh, kind of offer some young professionals uh, guidance in, in, in that manner. Um, another one being the IEEE Resume Lab in which uh, there are tips and tricks on how to uh, create an excellent um, uh, uh, Excuse me, uh, resume. Um, and from that, uh, please, if you have any questions, contact uh, us at young professionals at IEEE.org, and you can always catch our website, uh, www.IEEE.org slash YP. I'd like to thank everyone for uh, participating in this uh, uh, webinar, and uh, I hope to see you again for our uh, monthly webinar series. Uh, thank you very much, and take care. <laughs>